Hey guys, Steve with Aikmo Krav Maga. It's uh, Tuesday, which means it's ground day. That sounds just like, in my head, it sounded like it's Groundhog Day. I was about to say it was Groundhog Day. Uh, we are slowly losing our minds here uh, in isolation, but to keep sane, we're gonna work out. So, uh, last Tuesday, we did some mobility drills on the ground. And uh, for those of you who are following along, you can do that one you know, as many times as you want. You can do this one as well. Super simple stuff. So let's start with a quick warm up before we get started, just uh, get the blood going. So let's start with something super simple. Just shake it out, get nice and loose. Hope everyone's staying uh, limber and in shape. I've seen way too many memes about people gaining weight and uh, becoming less athletic during the isolation. So let's not let that happen to us. Nice long twist. Don't plant your feet against the ground. Just don't whip into the ground. Just have your come up on the balls of your feet as much as you need to. Turn all the way. Ah. Look, even just a little activity is going to help. Now, I know that some people are still going out and jogging and doing stuff. Do that at your own peril. Personally, here, we're just, you know, cloistered in here, trying to do our part to, uh, you know, Flatten that, uh, flatten that uh, curve of infection. So, uh, just like last time, I suggest you find a place in your home where you're not going to bump into anything. There's no furniture around. If you manage to find some some mats, uh, some yoga mats, some soft carpet, wherever it is that you're training, or if you're a hardcore and you're doing it on tile or marble, hardwood floors, and that's pretty awesome. And uh, we. Uh, don't recommend it, but that's up to you. Good. Nice and easy. You just fall along at home, which get nice and loose. Remember that you can do any combination of our videos. So if you have videos of ours doing a particular warm that you like, you can do that, and then you can fast forward through this, and then get right to the uh, displacement exercises. Now these exercises on the ground are not grappling techniques per se. I mean, we use them for ground fighting, but they don't necessarily, you know, we're not gonna show you the actual locks and holes and hyperextension and stuff like that, okay? It's just about staying mobile on the ground. Now, I mentioned to you guys that the thing is, when you're an adult, these positions are no longer comfortable for us. I mean, just sitting like this for a while. If you're not a, as a child, you sat like this all the time, no problem. As an adult, I doubt that many of you sit like this for any particular amount of time for whatever reason. You know, it's just it's an odd thing to do as an adult. We have chairs. But when you were a kid, you used to sit in front of the TV and do stuff like this for hours. Try doing this for 30 minutes and you can have a sore back for a week. You know, we just, we're not accustomed to doing this on the ground. We don't spend a lot of time on the ground anymore as adults. It feels weird for us. So you have to become comfortable here because I guarantee you that the people who are good at ground fighting, people who do judo, jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, uh, wrestlers, if they want you on the ground, they're going to put you there. And if you feel like a fish out of water there, you're in real trouble. No matter how good a striker or kicker you are, you're in real danger if you get down there with them and they know what to do and you don't. So we got to be mobile. It doesn't matter how many different moves you know. All right? So uh, I've seen people who play the UFC video game or watch UFC on, on, and they, they, they can call the fights. They can do it as well as Joe Rogan. They know all the moves and encyclopedic knowledge of, of, of techniques on the ground. And you might know the names of them. You might be able to apply some of them, but if you lack mobility on the ground, you're not gonna move fast enough or smooth enough in order to apply those techniques. That's important for you to know that. And if you lack mobility in your limbs and your joints, or you don't have the, the speed, it's gonna really mess you up. So stay limber, okay? That's what these exercises are for. Let's get some stretching. Very relaxed. Bend here at your waist. You don't have to get all the way, just get there. Grab your toes here. Grab on the inside, give some a little pull. Elbows to your knees. Grab, 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 grab. Just relax. Looking up. Good. Bring this in. This is super important. I can't begin to tell you how much flexibility matters, all right? Um, if you are not flexible, it's going to affect you on the ground because yeah, we're, we're, you know, basically, you know, bipedal, you know, uh, primates, but 
we're not fighting uh, Marcus and Queensbury rules, okay? We're gonna have to use all of our four limbs in order to have a victory on the ground. So you gotta be able to do some of these basic drills so you can bring your leg up to places where they ordinarily wouldn't be, all right? Bring your hips forward, roll into that stretch, roll into it. Let gravity do the work for you, put your elbows down. Just relax into those stretches. All right, this doesn't require a ton of flexibility, but you definitely have to do the work. And if you guys are only doing this on Tuesdays, then you know that's, that's tough too. We recommend that you do these warms every day. Now, if you're not accustomed to that level of physical activity, then leave yourself a day in between. But make sure you have some sort of schedule at home. And make sure you're mixing it up. At least once a week, do the ground training. At least once a week, do the circuit training that we did, right? The, 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 the calisthenics and the cardio. At least once a week, do some shadow boxing. But if you combine all of these things together, you're doing this at least five times a week, all right? And that's not bad, that's great. Okay. Um, what else? I have a list in my head, so forgive me if I take a moment to like uh, go over it. Um, oh yeah, so one of the things I'm gonna do, this basic exercise you've seen for, for the kids class, the adult class, let's add some of these components. Look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab my foot like this and my knee, I'm gonna bring it into my chest and hug it, all right? Now this is important, why? We have techniques in ground fighting where I may have to bring my leg up and over someone's shoulder, up and over someone's head. I have to grip a, a limb and their head together. Triangles and rubber guards and things of that sort. If I'm gonna do that type of thing, I have to be able to bring my foot higher up. If I wanna come and slip on the Moplata, I gotta make sure this foot goes over. So, instead of just yanking your foot towards you, hold your foot, hold your knee, and bring it down as parallel as you can. All right, relax that leg. Feel that stretch. Doing it from a seated position is fine too. If you want to just bring this up and just bring it here, that's fine. If you want some added stretch, lay in. Same thing on the other side. Easy to do from up here. It's practically touching your chest, right? Practically touching your chest. If you want to relax into it. Feel that stretch right there, right there. Awesome. Relax your spine. There we go. Another way to get that flexibility is by doing it this way. Bring your foot up this way and lay into it. Stretch your leg out, point your toes. Just like that. Getting this leg here is gonna be important, especially if you're trying to pull an S guard. Sorry, an S mount. So you're gonna to have to have your foot here, okay? Now, if you're able to do all those, let's start with something super basic. Some falls. Last Tuesday we had seen that one of our objectives was to do a proper back fall. Why is that important? I keep telling you guys, if someone's big, and experienced and they want you on the ground, they're probably gonna get you there. All right, now I know a lot of martial arts systems, especially the traditional styles, even some of the modern self-defense systems claim that they're anti-grappling, all right? They have a, a counter to all the grappling. Sure, we have techniques that prevent us from going to the ground. And I'd rather not, because if I'm outnumbered, being on the ground is gonna slow me down, it's gonna make my chance of escape much, much more difficult. So I don't wanna go there. But just understand that those things don't always work, all right? I have to be prepared to fight in their element. Because if not, think of it this way. If they put you on the ground and you feel like a fish out of water, you're in trouble, all right? So let's learn first by falling. Because if they take you down and you instinctively throw your arms behind you, that's a fractured wrist, that's a dislocated elbow, broken shoulder. Uh, all, things, all these things can happen and now you're fighting with a handicap. So ideally, if I'm gonna start and do a back fall, I'm just gonna review this from last week, tuck your chin in, curve your spine, and relax into this. And don't use your hands to come all the way up. Very simple. If you have trouble with that, start from an easier position. 
go to the balls of your feet. All right. And if this is difficult for your knees, start from here. So let's just do this through a natural approach. I'm going to do five of each. I'm going to start from this most basic position. Legs out. Tuck my chin down so the back of my head doesn't smash against the floor. Exhale. You come up. Chin down. Three more. Now, let's do it from uh, this position. Balls my feet. I'm going to use a lot, of, a lot more of my core. Chin down. Let's do five of these. Help myself up. Let's like come up this way. Break fall. And one more for good measure. Everybody think, okay, this hurts my knees. I'm not accustomed to this. Well, you got to get used to it. But if at the moment you can't handle this, then do this. Go to a near squat. Just get low and go into this. And come back up to that position. And now you'll be ready to do it from here. Just as a back fall from standing position. If you want to make it even harder, or just get some more cardio into it, do a jump from your knees to your chest and then fall. So that'd be just adding more cardio. It doesn't make it necessarily harder, it's just a cardio component, okay? So that's back fall. But that's just a recap of last week. If you want to add something a bit more complicated, bring your leg up. And I'll tell you why. If someone's taking my leg during a, uh, a single leg takedown, my leg's going to be up this way. So I'm going to have to fall, I only have one leg. So, start this way. My leg is up, fall, keep it up. Fall, keep it up. That's extremely simple. So bring it to here. All I have to do is bring my leg out, and it's not going to be involved in any way, shape, or form with the excess. My leg comes out. I bring myself back up without it. I'm basically doing the exercise with my leg up the entire time. See? Just keeping it up. It doesn't touch the ground. I can switch it out to make it more difficult. When I'm up to here, I switch. When I'm up to here, I switch. There you go. And you'll also be a hit at Jewish weddings. So you just a little, little bit of that dance. All right, super simple. You can do the same thing from this position. You're simulating someone taking your leg and then falling to the ground, all right? Now, this is, a more, this is more of a fall because if I have the leg up, and I really have to tuck because I'm actually falling, all right? That's gonna be an actual fall. If you have a partner to train with you, have them hold your foot, just like this. All you have to do is, um, just to give an example here. Uh, I'm not gonna put any weight on it, but I can have my foot here and just do the fall from there. There it is, super simple. Because when they grab that leg and do this to you, your leg's gonna be up. You're gonna be looking at your toes this way. So it's better to get uh, accustomed to that, okay? Try that a few times. If you have to put the video on pause and do that, do that. Do at least five times with the right, five times with the left, okay? That's back fall. Let's move on to side fall. Now look, if I'm being taken down this way, of course I need back fall. What if I'm thrown? What if I'm swept? We do a shibarai, all right? We do a whole bunch of sweeping kicks, knee nudges, all right? We're accustomed to taking our partners down. How do we handle that fall? Well, just as I curve my spine to fall backwards, I'm gonna curve my side to fall that way, all right? So I'm gonna curve my spine as much as I can, all right? How am I gonna do that? Sweeping out, 
curving my body and falling. I have to do it this way. Sweep my foot out, curve my body. So you see I'm doing it on my side. Now, I'm not putting my foot directly in front of me or around. I'm sweeping out. Why am I sweeping out? Because if I was attacking someone's foot, I'm probably going to come with a Shiba Rai. Bang! Smash their foot up. So if I'm going to do that, my foot's going to get swept up this way. I'm going to get thrown that way. Sweep out, curve your body. See how you get that nice, that nice rocking? I'm trying to roll towards your position here. Let legs out. Add the brake. I'm just doing it on my side. That's all I'm doing. If you don't want to do it from a standing position, you don't feel safe to do that yet, start here. Super simple. So, I'm going to do it from this position by bringing this leg all the way around and curving my body that way. That's simple. That easy. I can just come right back to here, help myself up, take my time with it, break it down. This leg's going to go out that way. Couldn't get easier. Now you want to do a little bit faster, okay? So let's try, we're going to go to my right, to my left, and we do one after the other. Very simple. See that curve? All right. It's not a back fall. I'm curving on my side. All right. Easy. Go ahead and pause the video and do that five times to the right, five times to the left. You don't have to do it one after the other, but definitely try to go one and then the other and transition as smoothly as possible. Okay. Good. Now, those side falls are just one part of the equation. We use shoulder rolls all the time. All right, I know that they look fanciful, but they're not a fancy move. If you get thrown and you don't curl, you're gonna land on your face. I might roll towards an aggressor, roll away from multiple aggressors. I might roll to see cover because someone's deployed a weapon, a firearm, and I have to roll for cover, become a moving target. All right, so to do that, just a recap from last week. One, two, three, four points on the ground. Not sitting back on my haunches, but up this way. Imaginary point in the middle. Slide my arm through, shoulder on the ground. Look, my head's not even touching. My head's not even touching, but I don't want it here. I want to click it as if I'm looking at my belly button. I should want to see my belly button. Now, the more I stretch, the more I reach for my toes, my legs come up on my tippy toes. This is going to come over. And I'm gonna just roll, just like that. I come to this position. Very simple. Return to your point of origin. I'm gonna do it this way so you can see a side view. Four points. Not sitting back on my hunches like this. This is hard to do. Come up this way, like a circle, all right? Like a wheel. That hand comes back, and as I'm reaching for my toes, Shoulder goes down, tuck my head in so I can see my belly button. I have to be able to see it. My head cannot be in front. I can't go over my head. My head's to the side because what's holding me up is the shoulder. If you're doing a somersault on your head, it's wrong. Here, legs come up. You see how my body's not on the ground? It's just my shoulder. I'm balancing myself on my shoulder. All right? And as I roll, come to here. Once you can do that, Try a simple exercise. Roll forward on your right, roll back on your right. Roll forward on your left, roll back on the left, okay? It's gonna look like this. Now I assume that at this point you've paused the video and you've done it slowly a few times. You've you know, taken time to gradually work your way. If you can do a forward shoulder roll slow, you got it. Sometimes people go super duper fast and <laughs> it's sloppy. Take your time and learn it. Now, I'm gonna go forward and back. Starting from here, arm goes through, forward, and I'm just going to bring my, myself right back over that shoulder. My head's tilted to the side, and right over the shoulder I can. 
Super simple. Holding this way, shoulder leads, and then come right back the way I came. Oh, and one you want to hit the wall. All right, but the idea is you want to do it as smoothly as possible. In the end, you should be able to do it from a standing position. Shoulder leads, I end up over there, then come right back. Shoulder, and right back. There it is, super simple, okay? So, once I get comfortable going through those shoulder rolls, I become more of a master of this dominion. I feel very comfortable on the ground, right? Very quick. So, let's also think about how we move on the ground. A lot of the times we see people who watch MMA or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or any type of ground fighting, and they assume that takedowns consist of simply leaning over and grabbing someone's leg or legs. But if I do this, I'm gonna eat a knee, I'm gonna get smashed in the back of the head, and this gives you no mobility. I have to basically throw them up on my back and it's impossible to do unless I'm super duper strong. I'm not doing this. I'm actually shifting levels. I'm actually moving forward, okay? Wrestling does it a certain way, Jiu Jitsu does it a certain way, Jiu Jitsu does it a certain way, but what they all have in common is shifting from high to low. Now I gotta get comfortable with this. This is the reality of ground fighting. And again, this might not be your preferred tactic, but it's hard to deal with those types of techniques unless you know them. So even if you're not a big fan of a single leg or double leg takedown during a fight, you better know it. So then you can know what the antidote or the preventative measure is for that technique. So start with something simple, getting comfortable being low on the ground. So with that, we do a very simple duck walk. Now, you can do duck walk this way and keep your feet separate. I'm gonna show you from behind what it looks like. My heels are nowhere together. I'm just doing this. All right, that's one way of doing it. Very easy way to do is just keep your heels almost together. So I'm just shifting this way. See how my heels are almost together? And then I bring my knee down. Here, you see? And I start that way. I'm doing like a square. One, two, three. Now I'm facing that way. One, two, three. Now I'm facing this way. One, two, three. Then I turn that way. Let's do it a little bit harder. Now when I advance, big step, big step, big step, instead of just turning and setting myself up again, I'm going to spin all the way around into that front position. Spin that way, spin that way, spin. This allows me to get used to moving around in a very low position to be able to do that without really hurting myself. It takes time, I don't make it look easy. It takes a little bit, okay? Now we got to combine all those techniques because Along with getting low, I'm not doing just a wrestling move. I'm also not just coming on my knees to grab somebody. It's a combination. I might go here and come up and capture. All right, I might go low, take another step and come up. I don't know. So we wanna get comfortable with transitioning from those two positions. So try it this way. Start from here, knee forward. All right, so my foot's here. Push forward so I can draw out my knee, get that nice stretch. All right? Then stand up from where I am. All right? Down again. Stretch. Strengthen your legs. All right? It's important to do that so we're comfortable. Now, we've worked on our legs. Our knees probably need a break. So let's go with something super simple. I'm sure you guys are very familiar. I think the name of that asana is the candle pose. I'm not really good with yoga, but if I can remember properly, my legs are up, pointing my toes. I'm trying to make my back as straight as possible. All right? But I'm holding myself up. I don't want to have to hold myself up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my belly button out that way. Is 
Let's do it again. And again. And again. Super important. Now, let's cross our legs. Grab an imaginary lid. Grab it nice and tight. And do it again. Hold it. Now, do it again, but this time when I come up, this leg, if you remember this exercise, make this uh, parallel, and I'm gonna put my instep underneath my knee, clamp down on this as much as I can, all right? That would, that's what my leg's gonna look like when I extend my torso, all right? So from here, should I bring that foot down? I bring it down. I can try to grab it with my hand. I'll grab it with my hand. Oh, missed it that time. Let me do it again. See what I'm doing? I'm getting that triangle position. Strengthens you. It's good. You do that a few times. All this makes it so, oh, you know, I have a, a great example. Um, one of our students here, one of our uh, kids, noted that the way we move around when we're doing ground class is very really similar to what Spider-Man looks like. We you notice Spider-Man's not hanging on very angular fashion like the other heroes, not standing on the sort of stoic like this. He's always crouching down, low to the ground, hands down, sort of always doing that type of pose, really low to the ground, very comfortable doing that type of thing. We gotta get comfortable like that. We gotta feel very much at ease moving around. And we gotta feel at ease moving on our backs as well. We're not always gonna be on top in a dominant position. So, let's look at some of this. This exercise is great. We're gonna do it in two different ways. Four points, once again. I'm just gonna put my foot from the left side to where my hand is on the right side. I'm just gonna substitute it. So I'm gonna come up and substitute. So far so good, right? Just substitute. But it's not enough to do that. I'm gonna try to sit out and make my belly button look up at the ceiling. So I'm gonna come up this way, have my belly button look. Just like that, and bring it back. Rest, take a moment. Come back up, substitute this way, belly button up. Rest. Come up, here. Come up, here. That's a very simple sit out. Now, there's different ways we can do this if you have different purposes for them. In one variation, I can bring my body up, bring my leg out, and use my head to look behind me this way. I'm trying to put my head on top of my aggressor. So I want to turn the corner. So let me try that on the other side. Come up, kick out, use my head here, keep my head on his body, Throw that leg over and around. Take it back. All right? Let me show it to you again. Out. Lean in. Throw that leg over. Take it back. One more time on the other side. Come up. Come up this way. Push on. Use your head. Get your weight into him. Throw the leg around. And take that back. One way of doing it. Go ahead and pause the video and do that a few more times on each side. Okay? Good. Now, here's another thing you can do. Now, I know this looks like break dancing, but it's not. All right. From here, sit out, put your hand behind you, and substitute. Sit out and come back. Now I go the same way. Out, hand down, come through. Out, hand down, come through. I want to do those moves. I want to be able to use my shoulder, my hips, and my legs in ways I don't usually do when I'm using bipedal locomotion. Okay? I'm not, some of you guys are great boxing footwork, all right? You're good on your feet. That's great. But there's a reason Muhammad Ali 
didn't want to go to the round to the ground with Antonio Noki. Because even though Muhammad Ali was great on his feet, he'd be out of his element down there with Inoki. And Inoki didn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ali. Because he'd be out of his element. So that fight was a disaster. Look it up on YouTube. It's a terrible fight. It was supposed to be a super fight. You know, boxer versus grappler, and it was as if one guy standing up, taunting the other guy, and one guy on the ground taunting the other guy, and it was basically that. Terrible. So, after you've done that a few times, all right, I'm sure you've paused the video and you've done that sequence a few times as well. Let's look at this. Last week we showed you how to buck straight up, hands up, defending, or throwing a limb up, or grabbing an imaginary limb. Or, right shoulder, on the ground, left shoulder up, looking behind me in diagonal, my hands are up. I'm not using my hand to hold myself up. I can have my hand here. I can hold something. I can throw it out. Look, my hands are acting independently. I can actually, what we do with the kids, guys, we have them grab a ball and throw it up this way. So I'm trying to touch a target behind me. All right, this could be a knife, uh, an assailant under the knife, We're grabbing them up the elbow, setting them up that way. Could be a limb. Could be head and an underhook. All right, we want to get ourselves up there. Well, don't go so fast. Let's do a sequence where, come up and bring your feet in, bring your feet in, bring your feet in. Get your body about as high as you can, hold it, hold it. Hands are free, hands are free looking. Come down slow. Okay, so the other way. Up, 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 up. Bring your feet in, get a few extra centimeters of lift. Arms out. Just like that. Go ahead and pause the video and do that a couple of times on each side. All right, really get the stretch in there. You have no idea how often we see people who, because they're fast or they're strong or they're both, grab, buck and roll, but after they buck, they actually drop and roll flat. They succeed because they're strong, they got lucky. Their, their aggressive must not be too experienced. You can't buck, drop, and then expect to reverse someone. If you're reversing someone and you're flat, you're not going to get there. I, I'm serious. I mean, we have kids in our kids' class, tweens, teens. We have some kids younger than 11. Well, if I put them on top of you and you don't know how to do that reversal, they're going to stick to you like glue and they're going to feel like they're 150 pounds, 200 pounds. They're just that good on the ground. All right? It's not about how much you weigh necessarily. They know how to use their body weight. They know how to uh, adapt to your motions and how to counter your efforts. All right? Believe me when I tell you that if you're fighting some 40 year old, look out of shape. But if that guy was the captain of his wrestling team in high school, doesn't matter if it was 20, 30 years ago. That guy is, uh, he's tough. You gotta be ready, all right? So learn to come up, throw the leg over, and that's how you finish. Just like we did last week. Go ahead and try that. Up, over, and come up, all right? Go ahead and pause the video, do that to your right and to your left, and to your left at least five times. All right? These are simple exercises. Get into the habit of doing this. We're gonna get quick on the ground, and I hope to see you guys trading here as soon as possible. Stay sharp.